Hello again, everybody. This is, incidentally, the second address I've decided to make with you today. Apparently, I have so much to share, but really, I think I just wanted to show these flowers off to everybody. I'd like to share with you today a discussion I engaged in, and this debate occurs far too commonly, I must unfortunately add, with a statist, one who believes in the benefits and authority of government, who is more specifically of the socialist line of thinking. He had posted an article to his Facebook page from the website NYC Socialism regarding the issue of a potential bankruptcy of the U.S. Postal Service unless tens or even hundreds, he claims, of thousands of working-class postmen be laid off. He referred to this reform as a system of austerity measures, which it may in fact be, although the financial mismanagement of the U.S. Postal Service has been for a long time now no secret to the general public and did so in the tragically trite and peevishly immature manner so prevalent in the tones of the childish, nearly religiously motivated supporters of statist ideologies, preferring to use personal attacks rather than logical reasoning to defend himself. In response to this article, my comment read as follows. Let them be laid off. They're inefficient, slow, and expensive. Find an alternative. Progress is a race. The remark was, from my perspective, impersonal, objective, a simple expression of my opinion as derived from the logic I found to be most sound. His response, however, was hardly as intellectually motivated, but rather seemed to be emotionally driven, but I'll let you decide that for yourself. He said, your ideology leads you to some of the most ridiculously backwards and reactionary conclusions. It's really sad you don't see that. How can you make comments in favor of ruling class austerity programs like that? You support Ron Paul and yet oppose working class postal workers. I'd like to briefly note that while I do support Ron Paul's efforts as a thinker and an author, I oppose the potential for his presidency. One can hardly achieve independence from government through the devices of government, and trusting one man to be able to do so is far too risky to consider. And furthermore, I believe the practice of voting is an inherently aggressive act, but the oppressiveness of voting is in itself the subject for another address entirely. Additionally, I would like to mention that I consider the privileged tax funding and authority status of the U.S. Postal Service and its employees to hardly distinguish them as working class. But this is also another issue bearing further elaboration than I'm sure you as the viewer have time for. To defend my stance on the matter, I sent him this message a few moments later. I said, I oppose a monopoly on distribution services funded with tax dollars stolen at gunpoint by the state and spent so inefficiently that it has managed to go bankrupt. I propose the idea that if these people's jobs are actually worth preserving, why not let them start their own postal services and improve the quality of mail services rather than perpetuating a failed state monopoly? If these workers are unable to do so, perhaps they should seek employment in an alternative field where they would not only make more money by pursuing whatever it is they do best, but allow the postal industry to improve. Do we need the government to deliver our pizzas to us? And do we continue to call a pizza place that consistently takes over an hour to deliver a cold pizza to us? And does the delivery driver put a gun to our head and demand how much we should pay him? Why should mail services be any different? And from this perspective, should the government then continue to bail out too big to fails with our tax dollars, which for the record are stolen from us coercively, lest the working class that might lose their jobs from such a bankruptcy become unemployed, as they rightly should be, since their efforts have led to the demise of the business. Should we just pass a law that makes it impossible for workers to be terminated, such as teacher's tenure, or for businesses to go bankrupt at all? Should the state spoon feed us in every aspect of living at the expense of the money we work for, which it steals from us and mismanages to lead to inefficient service monopolies? I think the answer to those questions are rather clear. Additionally, I find it reprehensible that every one of the status, such as yourself, that attempts to argue with me, resort to common insults rather than presenting logical evidence to support your claims. Calling my ideas ridiculous and backward is no argument for your beliefs whatsoever. Why is it so difficult for me to get some concrete answers from those of you who support the workings of the state, with what seems to be a conviction based entirely on faith alone, rather than on sound reasoning? What exactly forms the foundation for your acceptances that you as an individual are so incompetent that you need the state, and I'd like to remind you that any and all government is comprised of mere humans such as yourself, who apparently are so incompetent that others must choose for them what policies are best, to determine and provide the means for every aspect and service of your daily life. I'd like to believe individuals are far more capable than that. In fact, I'm sure of it." End quote. Finally, I thanked him for providing me with the subject matter to make this video, 
and told him that I would love it if he, or anyone else viewing, and please feel free to challenge my views, could manage to change my conclusions through the use of logical and sound reasoning. Presently, I'm still waiting for a response, hardly a surprise, but I have one more comment I'd like to share with you, and if you watched the Agra IO Liberty Unconference I took part in over the weekend that broadcasted from Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, you may have already heard me say this. But I feel as though the acceptance by the masses, state as though they may presently be, of the ethics and necessity of unrestricted individual freedom from the state is an inevitability, and for this reason rarely, if ever, feel discouraged. This is no accident, of course, and hardly an assertion of faith. The case for liberty is not only based on concretely founded principles of logic, but is to the best of my range of knowledge the only sustainable social model based on sound reasoning and ethical stability. As the systems of the world continue to collapse by result of the state's mismanagements, though unfortunately doing so at the expense of those subjected to the tyranny of government rather than those that govern, mankind will inevitably be enlightened and come to embrace the unbridled ideals of liberty and voluntary exchange between individuals, interactions free from the tamperings of men in positions of falsely assumed authority. For mankind, should it choose not to espouse such an honest and self-conclusive system of beliefs, will instead assuredly be left to rot in the unmarked grave it has mis mistakenly chosen for itself, answering the call to the casket that will inevitably come manifest as slavery to the state and to the criminals that pose as such an authority. But for now, I'll simply continue to acknowledge the insults and personal attacks by the status with lukewarm regards, patiently awaiting such a renaissance of humanity, or at the very least, a sound argument for why I shouldn't be. Thanks again for listening. I encourage your responses.